This is an organ that beats 90,000 times a day. That's about 3 million times a year, or put it another way, 2 billion times in a lifetime. I was amazed at a small organ like this, how much work it can do. The fascinating thing about the heart is that somehow with exercise it has to enlarge. There is no way that an individual can go from f pumping 5 litres of blood around the body to 25 litres of blood around the body for up to two or three hours at a time. The only way that can happen is the heart enlarges. Now in the vast majority of athletes that enlargement isn't gross, it's usually within the normal limits for the general population, but a small number of individuals, the heart can become very big, so big that it overlaps with diseases such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and dilated cardiomyopathy which are pathological heart muscle disorders that can cause death. I was very keen to be able to be relatively certain whether we've made a correct diagnosis in an athlete. You can imagine that if an athlete comes to us with a large heart and we erroneously give him a diagnosis of a cardiomyopathy, we have cost that individual his livelihood. We've affected him psychologically and potentially financially. We have had several firsts. We were the first to identify the physiological upper limits of cardiac dimensions in adolescent athletes. We were the first to identify ECG anomalies in adolescent athletes and how they changed over time. We were the first to really comprehensively de describe uh, the impact of exercise in black athletes. We've also been the first to describe the prevalence of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and ion channel diseases in athletes. The manifestations of athletic training in terms of ECG and the echocardiogram are determined by many demographic factors including age, size, the sex of the athlete and importantly ethnicity. Now in the United Kingdom 3% of our population is black but if you look around the Premier League or on the athletics track 20% of our athletes are black and 20% of the Olympic team for 2012 will be African or Afro-Caribbean in origin. What I had observed is that when we perform ECGs and echocardiograms in athletes, particularly the black male athletes, we find very bizarre repolarization changes on the ECG that can overlap with disease processes. And the differentiation in blacks is particularly important because data from the states suggest that black athletes are much more prone to sudden death from hypertrophic cardiomyopathy than their white counterparts. In a study that compared 300 black male athletes with 300 white male athletes in the same sporting disciplines, we found that whereas only 2 to 3 percent of white male athletes had a left ventricular wall thickness exceeding 12 millimeters, that would usually overlap with morphologically mild hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, 18 percent of black athletes had a wall thickness in that range. So many, many more black athletes get hypertrophy compared to white athletes. But the important thing about our research is no matter what the race of the individual, that wall thickness never exceeds 16 millimeters. The important thing about black athletes is that when we did investigate them in more detail, we found that none of our black athletes with left ventricular hypertrophy had a small left ventricular cavity, or abnormally impaired myocardial relaxation, scar tissue on the MRI, arrhythmias on the 24-hour tape or during an exercise stress test, suggesting that these changes are almost certainly physiological. We were fortunate enough to detrain some of these athletes and identified regression of the hypertrophic uh, process in our black athletes. What did strike us though about black athletes is their marked repolarization changes. And we followed these people up for six years and we found that black athletes with T-wave inversions in these V1 to V4 seemed to run a very benign course. But we did pick up two individuals who survived an aborted sudden cardiac death during that follow-up period. Both had T-wave inversions in V5 and V6 and based on that we take T-wave inversions in V5 and V6 very seriously in black athletes and recommend very comprehensive assessment and follow-up until we're absolutely certain uh, that things are absolutely fine.
Now the data that was generated from that research has gone into the development of, of guidelines by the European Society of Cardiology uh, in, in the interpretation of ECGs in young athletes. A lot of our work has been cited when it comes to uh, adolescent athletes and when it comes to black athletes. In fact, uh, this guideline about the fact that T-wave inversion in V1 to V4 in black athletes is probably a normal variant uh, has really come from our group. So not only do we uh, form guidelines, but a lot of um, information relating to subsequent investigation of athletes has been derived from our research.